Today we are here in the 2017 BMW X5M with John, which you guys will probably remember from the channel. He has the uh, purple Porsche GT3 RS, and we're going to talk about what it's like to own this car. With the one caveat that this you haven't had this for that long, right? No, not very long. It's a at recent all. acquisition, but prior to that, regular X5. Yes. With the V8. Yes, the twin turbo V8. Yeah. So, what are your first like initial impressions of the car, truck, SUV? Well, it's ludicrously fast, <laughs> you know, for a big, you know, close to 5,000 pounds. It's more than that. Yeah, it's more, like 5,300. Okay. All right, more than 5,000 5, plus yeah. pound SUV. This thing will haul like you wouldn't believe. You know, zero to 60 in what, four seconds? Under four seconds? Yeah. yeah, it's ludicrous. Yeah. Uh, it's still very heavy, yes. uh, but having, it still sits very tall. Yeah. But having said that, this thing will also corner like you wouldn't believe. Correct. Yeah. That, that's very true. How do you, do you think it's worth the price premium over the regular X5? Yeah, the V8? The, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the last one was fast. It was, yeah, it, it was, was quick. Also, we it took was a quick. ride with it. Yeah. yeah. It was. But the problem with that was just so much body roll. And part of the problem is maybe I opted for air suspension on that one. Okay. And just with the nature of air suspension, it's smooth, but it's also, it just wallows. You know, yeah. when, you, when you turn, it's just so much body roll. The trade-off on this one is it does ride sort of harsh, I think. Yeah. And this yeah. is not even on the biggest 21-inch wheels. This is down to the 20s also. Right. It's not the most... I mean, the interior, everything is amazing. The seats are great, but the actual just ride itself isn't the best. Well, part of the reason, too, is this is going to be the winter driver, you know, once snowfall hits. Mm -hmm. And I think when I did my research, I... Or at least at the time when I looked on Tire Rack, mm -hmm. getting winter tires for the 21s was oh, not, yeah. not an option. So yeah. the 20s, you're you're much easier. You, I, I think know you can get, yeah. Mike is struggling to find 21 inch winter tires for his right. RS7. Yeah, it's, it's much more challenging. Yes, for these 20s, I think you can get um, the uh, not Blizzax, but was it the uh, Pirelli winter sport? Sort of, oh, okay, yeah, or something like that. No problem. Um, all right. So overall, yeah. You're very happy with it. Very happy, yes. What's your, if you had to pick a favorite part and a least favorite part of owning an X5M. Okay. 2017. Yeah. Favorite part. Okay. Favorite part, I think, is the handling. Handling? Um, yeah. Given its proportions. Right. Given its proportions. But, you know, but sort of, because I, I got to drive a Range Rover not that long ago belonging yeah. to a friend of ours, right? Yes. And it's also very quick in a straight line, but the handling, <laughs> not even close to yeah. this car. Yeah. Not, we're not even uh, in the same ballpark. Well, Although, if you really want to compare that, I think you need to try an SVR. Right, right. Or maybe like a Cayenne Turbo, I think, yes, would be that's true. a good comparison. You used to have a Cayenne, right? I did. I had a Cayenne ago. S, um, oh, okay. first gen. Yeah, long yeah, long yeah, Cayenne S, yeah. So, your favorite part's the handling. Yeah. What about, do you have a least favorite part yet? Least favorite part, and this is a problem with all the, uh, you know, the higher echelon M's, the M5, M6. Yeah. Um, and X5M, X, uh, X6M. X6M, it's the sound. It just doesn't sound very good at all. Uh -huh. You know, part of the reason of buying an M is, you know, you want the experience, but part of the experience is the sound. So mm -hmm. you want to hear something good. And That's again, true. I got jaded because I got I've driven a friend of ours RS7 recently. Yeah. And the way that exhaust sounds, you know, granted yeah, he's got Mike's, aftermarket. Mike's RS7 is Granted, it's got, <laughs> yeah, granted it's got aftermarket, but even in stock form, you know, yeah. there's some good sound coming out of the exhaust. Uh, with these higher echelon amps, there's just no exhaust sound. It's, you get the fake induction sound. There's a lot of that, but mm -hmm. there's no exhaust sound at all. It just sounds very tame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although, so a little more context on what you live with. Yeah. You have a straight pipe GT3 RS, Correct. which deafens people. <laughs> yes. Um, the M3 compact. Yes. And then, so like... Right, so with the compact, they, uh, for the M3 at least, they yeah, take so out the resonators. Sounds, sounds a bit better. And the exhaust, so it does sound better. It does sound a bit better. If you're trying to, if somebody was deciding between an X5M or the Cayenne or the AMG yeah. or whatever, what how, what do you think, or the Range Rover, how do you like, what defining factor do you think would lead them to this? I think, you know, I think it depends on how specialized you want to be. You know, okay. if you want an SUV that goes fast and handles well, you know, granted you may have one other sport car or possibly no other sports cars, right? Yeah. I think this is a solid choice. But if you want your SUV to be just an SUV, then I think something like a Range Rover mm -hmm. uh, would be a way to go. Or you might even look at a G-Wagon, you know. <laughs> right. And, and I mean, if you want your SUV yeah. to be a Bruno primitive truck, truck. then sure, yeah, the G-Wagon. <laughs> I mean, you were looking. thinking about one of those at one point, too. I, I was, yeah. Until I, I sort of talked you out of it. I was, and I, and I drove it, too. Well, you know, to, to highlight the handling, see, this this car right here, all right, so we're going on a straight line right now, 50 miles per hour, right? Yeah. Just going to do this little... Yeah. 
Little it moves. Little it reacts. And the front end moves. Yeah. And, you know, in the, uh, in the, and I drove a, a G, I drove a G for five fifty. Okay, right? they're all the same. And, right, and I was going pretty slow. Right, forty miles per hour, and I'd have to do this just to get get the car Apparently, to track yeah. in a straight line. Correct. Yeah, it's not so. And yeah, you can do this and nothing happens, but you also have to do this because mm-hmm. you just lose that front end. You have no idea what that front end is doing, and you have to just you know the only way you know what the front end is doing when you start to feel the car Correct. and see the car drifting away, and you're like, oh, time yep. for correction. Oh, this is completely different. This oh, really does handle like. Yeah not an SUV. Right. I'm, I originally was like, these are cool and I like it a lot more than I thought I would after spending all day yesterday with it. Yeah. I drove it around. I took it to the gas station, went to get groceries in it. And then we reviewed it. Obviously took it on some back roads. Yeah. I am greatly impressed. The interior, it still smells like a new BMW. Cause again, it is 1800 yeah. miles. It is yeah. quite new. Yeah. The, um, yeah. The interior is shockingly good for a BMW. Um, you know, you, you Kind of sound, you sound surprised. <laughs> I, you, you are, yeah, a little bit. Because the last time I think I was in something that had, you know, stitched leather this night. Nice. So it, it was an Aston Martin, really. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the first thing John pointed out was, dude, look at the leather stitch. You got yeah. here, you got here, you got here, and all the way down there. Yeah, all the way down here, which usually, even in luxury cars, yeah. is just kind of like cheap all plastic. All nice soft touch this is, leather. Yeah, this is le- stitched leather all the way down here, you know, where you kind of like store your gloves or, mm-hmm. you know, water bottle, whatever. This little compartment, that's, even in luxury cars, that should be plastic but yeah. no in this car stitch leather excellent interior it handles really well yep. it's obviously absurdly fast like yes. this is as, as fast as like we're about to go hop in the m3 in a little bit right. it's gonna be like pretty much just as fast oh absolutely yeah and which you get is, clean launches every time correct uh, all-wheel drive go yeah sometimes in the m3 you just light up the yeah back so like and you're not like going. Josefa's m6 it just yeah. spin 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 yeah. doesn't go anywhere yeah the m3 too really mm-hmm. that could happen yeah all wheel drive i mean you were also discussing how this might be sort of a preview of what the new m5 is going to be right the all-wheel drive will be a little more advanced but similar i believe set up yeah and same 4.4 yeah a little more power in the new yeah one, but yeah. we're not that far off yeah but it'll know? feel the same characteristic also key um this thing has the eight speed right. automatic yeah. the new m5 is going to be the eight speed automatic so yeah. it's very similar i think yeah in certain key ways which well, i'm excited about well you know what one of the things we talked about is one of the things i don't like and i'll tell you what i don't like about it the what they meant it's got the eight speed automatic but what they managed to do is program it like a dual clutch oh yeah you mentioned um um, so there are some good and there are some bad. And I'll tell you what one of the bad is. So if you're on a, you know, you're on an incline, you're parking and you're kind of stopping an incline at a light, right? You're expecting torque converters. You just take your foot off the brake and you would think it will hold. It will mm-hmm. hold for a second and then the car will just, the transmission kind of decouples. Like de- yeah, it does a weird thing. And then the car just starts rolling back like yes. you're in a dual clutch. Yeah. And you, you don't expect that because you're thinking, what, what's going on? It's an automatic. I'm wondering if they might have programmed in some of those characteristics to try yeah. to imitate because people seem to associate dual clutch, those right. weird things as more sporty yeah i don't know but it definitely has those behaviors it shifts amazingly quickly. yeah if you, uh, yeah, great. If you uh, yeah if you set the uh, transmission to the most aggressive setting and you bang it in full throttle mm-hmm. you do feel this kafunk in the car you yeah know, you can feel it no that's not almost like a dual clutch yep yep overall we're pretty happy with it ready to yeah, spend happy. time with this vehicle very happy yeah. i gotta get some winter tires on it you know around thanksgiving time that'll, yeah that'll be fun that'll be two thousand dollars out of my pocket but oh, boo-hoo. <laughs> i'm sure you'll be okay <laughs> i'll be all right yeah all right i hope you guys kind of like a glimpse into what it's like to own an x5m i am really impressed with it and yeah i'm sure i'm gonna bother you a lot to like spend time with it in the future yeah. we'll do we'll do like some like super suv comparison tests between like this and, you know, and one, of the X, thing, one of the things that we kind of discover as we priced out different options across different brands is that Bang & Olufsen and BMW, it's a really good deal. 3700 gets you the Bang & Olufsen. The top speaker system. Yeah, that's yeah. totally worth it. It's nice. It sounds great. Yep. Mm-hmm. Good choice. Cool car, very unique, very different and comprehensively capable yeah. to defy the laws of physics. I've probably yeah. used that phrase way too many times in this series of videos, but that's what this thing does. Yeah. Defies the laws of physics. In case you guys are wondering what this color is, this is called Aragon Brown with a kind of a two-tone ebony Aragon Brown interior. Lots of carbon fiber. I like it. Yeah. I like this. I like the contrast between the colors. Yep. It's good. All right. Thank you. Um, check out the, there'll be a full, there's a full cinematic review, like a whole length thing. There is one of the 90 second videos on this car. So that's the, uh, the three video series on them and M3 videos will be up or coming or posted at some point. All right. Yep. Awesome. Thanks. See ya.